party that we're going to have at church this weekend. The Christmas tree. <laughs> like the big tree, the one that I have over here? Yeah. And I can't wait to sing Christmas hymns and eat cookies with all of our church friends. It's going to be awesome! Yeah! Yay! What's going to be awesome? Uh, only our super awesome church party this weekend. How come you guys get to go to church and believe in all that stuff? Last time I checked, Christmas was trees, lights, baked goods, and little kids having Christmas sugar rushes on Christmas Eve. We never got to church. Well, it's about time you started. Church is the best. But Hazel, what do you, what do churches have that are so important? Uh, well, we worship the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We sing songs of praise in His name, praying to God, repenting for our sins, practicing faith. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The list goes on. Hold up. How, what are the Father, Son, and, I don't even remember the last one, but who are those people? Okay, so, no, nothing like that. I think it's time for me to teach Mateo the story of Christmas. What do you think? I think that's the best idea I've heard all day. Once upon a time, except that it really happened. Okay, I'll read you that. Okay, so a really, really, really long time ago, ago, there was this woman named Mary. Wow, the fruit in that stall across the street looks so good. Maybe I'll go get some. Stop. Sorry. Okay, relax, Mary. There's no super bad vibes here. Honestly, I used to be super uptight, but then peace, an angel you don't know, taught me a great lesson. I'm not uptight, as you can see. So it's cool. How do you know my name? Um, how can I not know your name? Uh, wait, what, did, what was I going to say? I forgot what I was going to Wait, I got to look on my clipboard. Um, okay. So, I'm an angel dude, and you're favored by the Lord. Cool, right? Hey, you like my gem that I got going on? I got the hat, the halo, the super cool gold ring necklace. It's not chained, though. I was, I don't know. It's... Anyway, um, and yeah, and I got this super cool angel thingy. So, why did I come here again? Oh, right. So, well, in any case, I'll introduce myself. I'm Angel Gabriel, or you can just call me Gabe. And as for why I came here, <coughs> our master in heaven has tasked you with something big. Trust in him. You are favored by the Lord. Mm. Oh, right. Um, you will be with child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob, for, Jacob forever, and his kingdom will never end. But I can't. How can I possibly? Okay, so step one, cross off I can't off your list of vocabulary, and two, God can't. Dude, he literally made the universe. Like, everything. Even that chick. Um, but how will this be, as I am still a young girl? Okay, you're favored, you are favored by the Lord, remember? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The Lord is with you, dude. In other words, do not worry. Oh, yeah. Oh, wrong way. I need to tell Joseph. So, do you like it so far? At least, do you think it's interesting? It's definitely interesting. Was the angel actually uh, like that? Well, <laughs> not exactly, but I kind of changed it a little bit because we wanted it to be a bit more interesting. There's more to the story, right? Uh, I mean, not like that, but I, uh, not that I care a bunch or uh, anything, but I do know, I just kind of uh, thought just, Go ahead, just tell me. <laughs> Joseph, Joseph, there's something that important I have to tell you right away. Oh, hi Mary. Is everything alright? An angel 
came to me. I am to give birth to the center of the most high. Mary, is this some kind of joke? No, Joseph. You're telling me that an angel came to you and said these things? Yes, believe me, Joseph. Why would I try to fool you? <sighs> I just don't know how this can be possible. I don't either. The angel came and said to me that I'm favored by the Lord. Are you sure you're not dreaming? Yes, more sure than I have been about anything else in my life. God put us on in the world for a reason. We must fulfill his task. He has a plan. Okay, Mary. I believe you. Oh, this is so boring. When did the when did the third shepherd say he, shepherd he say he's going to get back? What did he even leave to do anyways? I don't know. Something about chips and soda from the shop. I don't know. He was talking crazy. I just kind of want to take a nap. Well, wake up. We each have to do even more work due to his inconvenient absence. Oh, this ship is the worst. Man, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I just wish I had a pillow. Then that would be pretty cool. This is the most uneventful experience ever. I could literally be at home right now, hanging out with my family and doing desirable things, but no, I'm stuck in the field of another shepherd who's half asleep. Well, sometimes you have to do some things you don't want to do. You know, to like things for other people. Life isn't all about like being things you're only for yourself. Also, I say I'm mostly asleep instead of half asleep. What's that sound? What sound? I don't hear anything. You're hearing things. Then I hear something, like a song. Actually, yeah, I do hear something. That can't be town choir, can it? No, they can't sing that well. Ah, uh, come on, they're not that bad. They literally practiced for a month for the recital, but they had it. They, but then they had to sing the ABC because they weren't ready. These are adults we're talking about. Well, no one learns at the same pace. Didn't you have to not do the talent thing in the town square? Like... I, a few hours before you st it started, be before you had practice. Oh, you are the worst coworker ever! Because I was telling the truth. I'm so tired. Hey, that, that, listen. That sounds getting louder. Greetings, we bring good news of great joy. Hey, I just thought of something. Lila, when God sent us down here to tell these guys of the good news, why didn't he say it for us to word it's good news? Wouldn't it invent in in times such as this, be qualified as great news? Hmm, I'm not really sure. I'll ask the boss when we get back. But just say good news for now.
wouldn't want the boss getting upset with us. <laughs> Lila, God does not get upset. Well, I know that, but I want to respect his wishes anyway. He has a plan, you know. All right, then. Oh, how rude of us not to introduce ourselves. My name is Evangeline, and I am an angel from heaven. My name means good news, which is just what we've brought. God has sent us with the duties to tell you of something amazing. The Messiah shall be born. Ah, uh, Evie, I think you might have freaked them out just a tad. Whoa, whoa, what? What is how? Um, how? Just curious, and I feel so awake. How are you? I'm Lila, also an angel from heaven. My name means night, and I am an angel who oversees childbirth. So this is a really big deal for us angels, too. Why are you e even here? Did we angel God in some way? Have our sins caught up with us? Why, of course not, for you are only shepherds. What we want is for you to go to Bethlehem. You must follow the star until you reach a manger, and there is where the baby shall be born. Can you follow all of that? <sighs> of course we can. Um, we can try, but who will watch the sheep? I'm sure they will be fine. After all, God will watch them. He is the king of all shepherds, and we are his lambs. Wait, what? <laughs> Don't think too hard about it. She just means that God will always watch over us and protect us, and make sure things always go according to his ultimate plan. Sometimes when we have a setback, we just have to remember that God is in control, and God will make sure things work out with our best interest always at his heart. If something doesn't go how we want it to, just remember that this is all part of his brilliant plan. Mary's cousin Elizabeth, although she is an older woman, became pregnant to, in God's plan to prepare the way for the Messiah. Now, go forth and make for Bethlehem. But I'm almost done with this chapter. Could you please be a bit quieter? Ooh, the next chapter looks awesome. Well, funniest meter explosions caught on camera. Um, dude, number one, that's not funny. Two, is that even the right book? Is that the, the hey, that's not the celestial science math, mathematic book I gave you. That's space comedy. You made me what the hell? my point. <laughs> hey, guys. What if we, like, follow that star? I'm looking at it, and I understand it has some significance. If my calculations are correct, which they always are, this, is, this specific star appearing in the part of the sky at this point of time. Yes, yes, we get it. Now, what does it mean? Well, I think it means a king has been born. Wait, did Herod have, like, a son or something? I thought all the women were, like, too afraid to marry him. 
I mean, like, I get it. The guy's a creep, but, like... Um, I'm not exactly sure if he was a son of Aaron. How about we hop over to Judea and ask about him? Well, I guess it would be kind of cool to get out of the tower for a bit. Plus, my sleeping quarters are getting... Drowned in constellations, countries, and planet angles, and star calculations, then I'm going to end up knowing how to lay down anymore. Do you know how painful it is to sleep on a stone floor? Is that a yes? I suppose. As long as I can bring my space comedy book. No! Sheesh. <laughs> but you will mostly, certainly, be taking a celestial science and mathematics book. And I will teach you everything that I have in the midst because you certainly have lost that book. Oh, man! Let's pack our things for the journey tonight and go to bed. Early next morning, I'll get our candles ready and grab some food for the market for the journey. Can we'll I leave our stumble? candles right after. The first thing in the morning. Got it! Oh, I got it. And maybe you won't even see a meteor explode on camera. Not in my watch, you won't. Okay, that got uncomfortable fast. Anyway, good night, guys. Get some sleep. You'll need. No, it cannot be true. How are things like angels, God, or even possible? They can't be. Right? Who? Wait. Are you? No, you can't be possibly be a... Uh... Hello, Mateo. Ah! Your parents will almost wake up, so keep it down, okay? Mateo, we've heard about how you've been doubting your faith, and about the way your friends tried to explain it to you. We understand they tried, they depicted the characters as rather, well, interesting. I'm Lila, and this is Evangeline, but I'm sure you already have heard about us from your friends, right? Even if you don't, don't worry. You will know about us soon. Anyway, will you spare a few minutes of your time? You won't regret it. You promise. Uh, but my parents will be worried. Trust us, okay? We're literally angels. Now close your eyes and imagine the sky. Whoa, is that my house? Yep, that's angel magic for you. So now, we're going to tell you the last little part of the Christmas story. The most light concluding part. And we're going to tell it from our perspective, which is arguably the most credible. Perhaps. So after the wise men or the magi saw the star, they assumed that since the star said a new king would be born, they went to the city where King Herod ruled. Because a city as rich and posh as that one, Judea, had to be where a king would live, right? I guess so. Located in Jerusalem and ruled by the scary King Herod, Judea was quite powerful at this time. Whoa. Honestly, I wouldn't really want to live there. If it is under Herod's rule, the wise men in Sophia and, and Hazel's story, especially Melchoy, didn't have the best things to say about him. Yeah, he isn't exactly someone you want to call a friend. We're gonna go visit him. Oh, cool. Wait, what? No, you'll get us killed! No, Mateo, it would be like watching a movie. These things already happened in time, so we're just seeing them in play. But wouldn't they still see us? Then that could affect how Harold's conversation with the Magi goes, and in short, that could completely alter history. Well, that depends on how sloppy the magic is. But our high tech angel abilities will enable us to be like ghosts, in a way. So we'd be invisible? To the people in the past, yes. But if. But we'll be able to see each other. Also, if you run into someone, don't worry, you'll just slide through. Through them? Yeah, just like how you pass through air. Okay, easy. Should we head down? All right. Whoa, this is different. I never expected this to
to be what Jerusalem would be like. But, I mean, I guess I didn't really know it at all, but everything is so... Everyone's so social. Well, yeah, the world back then was not too different from the world now. Okay, well, maybe a little. Yeah, people interacted just the same back then as now. Except they didn't do it with a phone and their hands. If they were speaking, chances are they were writing letters. Like by pigeon or something? Hmm, that depends. Oh, look at the sun. This is about the time when the Magi would arrive to meet Herod. Oh, you're right, we better get going. I still don't think this is a good idea. Yeah, that's downright evil. Well, you've seen what you needed to see. Let's head back to the present time and tell you the last part of this amazing story. Just hold your breath and close your eyes. As your friends probably told you, Mary and Joseph would go to the Bethlehem to report the sentence. The sentence. The sentence. But none of them... But none of the inns had any room for them. Mary was ready to give birth, and she needed somewhere to stay. Luckily, a kind innkeeper took pity on them, and though he didn't have any room available, let them stay in his stable. Mary gave birth there, and soon after, the shepherds arrived to offer congratulations. The Magi arrived then, too, and offered gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Mary accepted these things with grace and was very thankful.